very good morning and uh, welcome to the dawn service at uh, Richmond Town Methodist Church. It's a new month and uh, we are grateful to God for his providence, his protection and all the opportunities he had given us over the last past months and uh, we look to him for courage and uh, new perspectives this day and for this month following. Why don't we take a time to bow down in prayer and look to him for encouragement and assurance. Let's look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, a taste of heaven is poured into each new dawn and we are reminded this new month of a new birth and of your redeeming love. And with this wake-up call, each one of us, Lord, can trust in the promise of eternity and carry your gentle presence with us into a new day and a new month. Soak us, Lord, in the grace you give at the dawn of new morning so that with this morning sun, our hope in you could also rise to cast light into darkness. This we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Why don't we begin our morning jubilation as we sing hymn number 38, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. i 
we have with us this morning Reverend Ebenezer Isaac who will be ministering God's word to us and it is our prayer that the Lord will strengthen us and give us the new insights we need for this month. Now it's over to Pastor Ebenezer. Good morning. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 12 to 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 starting from verse 12 to 16. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, Encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. But always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, what a joy it is, Lord, to seek your face early this morning. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will speak, O Father, to our hearts. Lord, we thank you for the message that you, O Lord, have, have, have kept for us. We pray, Father, that even as you speak into our hearts, Lord, we pray that you, O oh Lord, will continue to stir in our hearts. Lord, a new passion. Stir in our hearts, O oh Lord, Lord Jesus. A, f a new fire, O oh Lord. To serve you, to glorify you, to honor you. And Lord, that we, O oh Lord, will live a life that delights you, Lord. So, Father, we submit ourselves to you this, this morning, and we thank you, Lord. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. What an honor it is to bring God's word to you this morning, even as we begin this new month. I want to address the topic, evidence of thanks living, evidence of thanks living. David Sopper once suggested that basically the difference between a prison and a ministry is similar to the difference between griping and gratitude or thanksgiving. The difference between prison and monastery is, is also is similar to the difference between griping and gratitude. And this is, this is true, because when you think about a, a, a self-imprisoned person is always walking, walking in, in, in every moment, griping and complaining about the things in his life. But on the other hand, a person who is free, a person who is a saint, spends every waking moment thanking God, offering his thanks, and he is living in gratitude. On the other hand, a, a criminal can become a saint when he loses, when, when he gives up an attitude of gratitude. But it's also the same, a prisoner can, can become a saint when he adopts a, life of, a lifestyle of gratitude. So throughout scriptures, you see thankfulness is, is a prominent theme. And especially in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, it is here Paul shares these words of encouragement. And also commands to the, Corinthian, to the Thess Thessalonian Christians here. He says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice these words, thank, give thanks in all circumstances. So thankfulness is, is, is the way of life for us. Thankfulness is this constant attitude that we are called to adopt, to, for us to live out this kind of attitude. 
that it needs to flow from our hearts and, it, and, 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 and words of thankfulness should always be in our mouths and in our hearts. So this morning, even as we look at, the, look at these verses, as, as Paul writes to these Thessalonian Christians, we see various examples of believers in the New Testament especially Paul or Peter or apostles, we, we see them writing this particular command of being thankful in all circumstances. We see Paul was heavily persecuted throughout his ministry, and yet he writes these words that we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession. In Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. The writer of Hebrew also has to say something about thankfulness. He says, therefore, since we are, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. We read that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Peter also gives us reason to be thankful. Thankful in all circumstances. The thankful in the midst of grief and in all kinds of trials. And through hardships, he says, our faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed in, in us. We read that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. So an attitude of gratitude is often a mark of the people of God, often a mark of a, a, a godly person because they realize how much has been given to them in Christ Jesus, how much they have received from the Lord, from their Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus. And one of the things that we will see, as Scripture tells us, in the last days will be, the lack, will be a lack of thankfulness. And we read, it, we read that in 2 Timothy 3.2, where wicked people will be ungrateful. So this morning, I want to encourage you, even as we begin this new month, when we think about thankfulness or thanks living, we are called to be thankful because God is worthy of, all, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our thanks, of our praise, that, that, he, that he, he, he's right in receiving credit for every good and perfect gift that he has given you and me in the past month, in, in our past year, in the past few months, and throughout our lives. Because there's something amazing about being always thankful to God in every, every situation, in every moment of our lives. Because when we express our thankfulness, it, it really helps us to remember who God is, that God is also in control of every situation. It reminds us a bigger picture in our life, that we belong to God, that we are blessed by Him, that we have received every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. That all that we need, all that we want, God has already given us. That we've received abundant life, we've, we've, we've received every blessing that we need in our lives. So gratefulness is a fitting attitude for, for every Christian to wear, to bear in, in, in everyday life. So thankfulness is this mental and verbal expression of an individual who acknowledges the presence of God, who appreciates God, God, God as a person in, of his grace, of his blessing, of a sovereign work in, and in, 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 in his life and also in the world. And this morning I want to present to you four important evidences of thankful living, evidences that point to a person who is living a thankful and grateful life. So the first evidence that we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 15, is the ability to serve others than ourselves. We read in first, first, uh, verses 12 to 15, from, follow me as I read these verses. Now, 
now we ask you brothers and sisters to acknowledge those who work hard among you who care for you in the lord and who admonish you hold them in highest regard and love because of their work live in peace with each other and we urge you brothers and sisters warn those who are idle and disruptive encourage the disheartened help the weak be patient with everyone make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else you see the gift of servanthood is is really the embodiment of the mind of Christ and we as christians we are called to 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 have the mind of christ in our life to in, and, and in our lives and in, in in our daily life and one of the people who have inspired many many people in this world i can think of is mother teresa when you think about servanthood mother teresa dedicated herself herself to to those who this world has has abandoned those for many of us who who we would you know avoid the ones who are dirty the ones who are diseased the ones who are infected the ones desperate the ones who are lonely and abandoned by the society you see her motivation was not self worth it was not to gain recognition but for mother teresa it her, her service was about offering love and giving away herself once a reporter asked why why she why, uh, what was the reason behind of all of of the work that she does and she responded that is not how much we do but it is how much we love how much love we we put in in the things that we do let me say that again it is not how much we do but it is how much love we put in to the things that we do so when i think about thankful living the evidence is that we have it is the ability of one person to serve others than themselves I mean think about servanthood when you think about servant leadership there's none other than Jesus who is the epitome of servant leadership and servanthood and when i think about the passion of Christ and i think about we see Jesus moves moves completely out of himself that he is a man for others that he forgot he forgets about himself that he is constantly concerned about about his disciples and we see in the gospel of john a major chunk of the gospel is 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 what we call the farewell discourse where jesus is constantly of encouraging constantly comforting his disciples about what is to come that even in the midst of pain he is still concerned about his disciples that on his way to the cross we see him still comforting the women and even on the cross we see Jesus pardons the thief that he provides care for Mary and John who are at the foot of the cross that even in the most darkest moments Jesus continues to serve others which brings us to the second evidence of thankful living is the ability to express joy is the ability to express joy when we read through of the new testament we see the command to rejoice is almost 70 times is 70 times that is found in the new testament so it reminds us this morning that choosing to be joyful is a decision of the will choosing to be joyful is the decision of the will and many times you you may ask the question how do we rejoice when everything around us feel like it is falling apart how do we rejoice how do we how do we remain joyful when circumstances seem very blank bleak you see 
often we see happiness depends upon the circumstances that we are in and circumstances around us. But the, the joy that Paul is talking about in this specific verse, in verse 16, is that this joy is not dependent on the things that are happening around us. So our display of joy, joy, joy and our display of rejoicing is even in the midst of suffering is one of the most distinct character of a spirit-filled believer. A spirit-filled believe, 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 believer often displays a life of thanksgiving. Often displays joy even in the midst of, of a turmoil, even in the midst of pain. So how do we remain joyful continuously? Because to remain constantly rejoicing is only possible when, when we remember three important things. The first thing is we remember who God is. I love what Nehemiah says in Nehemiah chapter three, 8 verse 10. It says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I believe Paul was talking about this joy, our joy in the Lord. Our joy in the Lord is, is rooted in the deep thankfulness of who God is. Because it, it, it moves our focus to who God is, his character, his attribute, his love, his faithfulness, his gentleness, his sovereignty over all things, his omnipotence, his merciful. And his grace. And when we focus up our thoughts, our mind on these things, it is certain that we will always be in an attitude of constant rejoicing for who God is. Secondly, we can continuously be in, in the attitude of rejoicing is when we recall all that the Lord has done, all that the Lord is doing, and all that the Lord will do in and, and other in, in, in our lives. And we can certainly be joyful of all that the Lord has done through Christ Jesus. And when we focus on the Lord, it is certain that we will exude joy and that our joy in the Lord, that it will be our strength. And finally, one of the ways that we can continue to remain joyful in the midst of, in the midst of all the circumstances that we are in is that we continue to not only rejoice of what the Lord is doing in our lives, but also in the, in the, in the life of the, the community that we are in, in, in the world, in our neighborhood, in our nation, in, in our state or in our city or in the world as well. I love, I love when I hear from, from my friends what the Lord is doing in their life. It gives, it, it gives us a great sense of joy that God is so actively working in our family's life, whether if it's in our family's life, whether if it's in our friend's life. That is why it is so important to share, to share, share testimonies of what the Lord is doing in our life because that, that produces joy in people's lives, that it, pro, it provides, them, provides them evidence that God is continuously working, that he's not silent, he's not Lord, Lord who slumbers or sleeps, but he's God who is actively working in his people's life. Francis of Assisi spoke about the joyful heart. He says, Thanksgiving is the song of a saved sinner. Thanksgiving is the song, is the song of a saved sinner. And we, me and you this morning are people who have been redeemed, people who have been saved. We are no longer called sinners. We are no longer called enemies, but we are called sons and daughters of the Lord. And thanksgiving needs to be a life song. Thanksgiving needs to be a lifestyle that we are called to live. Which brings us to the third point. 
third evidence of thankful living is this assurance that we have. When we go in prayer before the Lord. As we see in, in verse 17, Paul commands the, the Thessalonian Christians, pray continually. You see, prayer is this natural response, is a natural consequence of our relationship with God, of our friendship with God. And when Paul says pray continually or pray without ceasing, that he calls us to be in continue, uh, continuous communion with the Lord. That we are constantly in conversation with the Lord. No matter what we are doing, we are constantly aware of what God is speaking to us and what God is telling us and leading and directing us. But more than often in, today in, in, in the work culture there is, we see we are off, we, we, our life has become, uh, in, uh, our life has become full of things that, are, that we do in a hurry, Right? And so many times we are overwhelmed by our problems and we think we don't have time for any other things. We don't have, don't have time for even to pray many times. So this sense of hurriedness often causes spiritual dampening, spiritual devastation. Carl Jung says, Hurry is not the devil, it is the devil. Hurry is not the devil, but it is the devil. We live in a culture of hurry. We live in a culture that, we, that everything has to be hurried, everything has to be fast, everything has to be done quickly. But there's something remarkable of, about praying. You see, when we pray, it forces us to slow down, to, to take a step back, to reflect, take a step back, to, to put things in perspective. It forces us to shift focus, focus not on our thoughts, but not on ourselves, but on the Lord. It points to us to stop thinking about how impossible things are around us, how impossible the, the tasks that has been given to us, how impossible the situation that we are in, but it it, it allows us to start thinking how possible it is before God and for God to help us overcome those obstacles in your life. So even as we begin this, this new month, may we stop, may we stop for a moment and, and, and once again put our perspective in the right place. By focusing on the Lord. By praying continually. By, by rejoicing continually. By serving others than ourselves continually. So when you think about praying continuously, it helps us to stop thinking how weak we are and it allows us to, and it forces us to start thinking how great our Lord is, how powerful the God that we worship is. It puts us in, in, in the right perspective of things that matter to God, the things that God can do when we commune with Him. Which brings us to the fourth evidence, evidence of thankful living is the ability to always be in an attitude of praise. Always be in an attitude of worship and adoration of God. You see, the, you see, the word praise really is derived from the Latin word which means praise. Therefore, praise is this recognition of, of the worth and, and the merit of, of God, right? Praise is really rooted in the confidence of God that God can use all things for good. That he is a God who is sovereign over all things. And when we realize this bless, blessing, this blessing often leads us, leads, leads us to an attitude where we, can, we give thanks to God in everything. 
So when we recognize that God is in control, when we recognize that, that all the blessings that we have received, received it compels us to, to respond with gratefulness. It compels us to respond with thankfulness in everything. I like what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Follow me as I read these verses. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice, Paul does not say, he didn't say, give thanks for all circumstances. But he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Because all life circumstances are not pleasant. All life circumstances are not good. But there is always something that we can thank God in every circumstances that we face and that we are in today. So today you may be in, in great difficult circumstance, but yet we can find time, yet we can find things to give thanks to the Lord. Here Paul use, uses the word thanks. And one more time in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, where he says that he gives thanks because, because these Thessalonian believers received God's word. That he finds in every circumstance that we can find reasons to give thanks. So what are you thankful of? Today, Paul reminds us for us to be thankful, for us to wear this, this garment of praise continually, that that needs to be our lifestyle. So even as we begin this new month, may we, may, may, if we haven't been living a, a life of thanksgiving, a life of gratitude before the Lord, may we, may we begin to live that kind of lifestyle. Because that is the mark of a spirit-filled believer. Even as I end, I want to end with this, this hymn. And this, this particular hymn was, was, is one of the most you know, sung hymns that we sing every, almost every single week or every single week. And this most beautiful praise comes from the most bleakest circumstances. During the decade of, of, of 16, 60s in England, England was, was, was struck with, with plague and there was about 70,000 people who died in this plague. During this horrifying, horrifying event, horrifying period during this time, a committed Christian, his name was Bishop Thomas Ken, kept encouraging people that he could still see the light of God's purpose and presence even through this difficult time. Even through this darkest hour, he could see that God was still working, that God was still present, that he was not silent. And it is in these times, even darkest times, that he felt compelled to pen these words as he wrote the song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. May we continuously praise the living Savior. May we continue to praise the triune God. Because they are worthy of our praise. So even as we begin this new month. As we heard from Paul's words. He calls us to be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. So even as we begin this new month, Lord, Father, we take, take a step back and, Lord, we, we recall all the great and wonderful things that you have done in the past month. 
Lord, in way that, ways that you have s- delivered us, in ways that you have sustained us, in ways you have provided us, in ways that you have protected and, Lord, shielded us. And, Lord, in many other ways, O oh Lord, that you have done great things in our lives. So, Lord, our mind, that our hearts and mouth are filled with praise this morning. So, Father, even as we begin this new month, Lord, we want to live a life, O oh Lord Jesus, with thankfulness. And Lord, may we continue to, Lord, serve others than ourselves, O Lord. May we continue to rejoice continually irrespective of circumstances. And may we continue to commune with you, Lord, continuously. And may may we continue, O Lord Jesus, to be thankful in every circumstance. For you are good and your love endures forever. So we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for today. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This time in response to God's word, God's word that we have heard this morning, let us sing our closing hymn during which we will also bring our tithes and offering. The QR code should be uh, on the screen, and or you can send it through bank transfer. Even as we sing, let us sing, To Thee, O Lord, hymn number 524. pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, what a joy it is to come before you, to spend time in your presence. Lord, even as we begin this new month, even as we have have received this offering, Lord, we pray that you will bless this offering. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of all blessings, that you, O Lord, so generously pour into our lives, that you continue to provide us, that you are the God who continues to sustain, and Lord, you are a God who continues to satisfy all our needs. So Lord, even as we surrender these offerings to you, Lord, may you, O Lord, 
be pleased. May you, O Lord, bless it, and may you, O Lord, use it for the extension of your ministry, Lord, in and through, O Lord, Jesus, us, and your church. And we come at all of these things, O Lord Jesus, in your most holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Oh.